I'm vamping. Hi, how's everybody doing? Hi, hi. Oh, don't fall, don't fall. Um, who's, uh, who's been in Nerd HQ before? Fantastic. You're lo at every panel. I, I love it, I love it. Who's here for the first time? Fantastic. Wait, that's like literally the same people just raise their hands. How's it even possible? I've kind of been here. I've been here in spirits. I don't know. Um, uh, who's excited to see Seth and gang from... Uh, I mean... Has anybody been at one of their panels at Nerd HQ before? Have you guys seen their panels? Fantastic. Okay, cool. So most of you guys have not seen a stupid monkey robot chicken Seth Green panel at Nerd HQ. Is this correct? Okay. Does everybody like their seats, by the way? No unobstructed, no obstructed views. You all have a, you have a cup holder. How great are those? <laughs> Anybody get a beer? I had one. It's not too early. Uh, I see a lot of, I see a lot of nerd shirts. Uh, thank you very much, by the way. I really appreciate you guys patronizing us. We make apparel for you. That's we believe in you. So, and Operation Smile. Awesome. Rock that. Um, and just so you guys know, uh, I'm sure you do, but. Every cent of the money that you spent to be here today, that all goes to helping kids in developing countries with their cleft lips and palates. So thank you very much for that. Much, much appreciated. So, um, so uh, oh, yes. <sighs> thank you so much. So uh, do we all know the rules? Are you allowed to take flash photography in here? No. Oh, you're so smart. Uh, are you allowed to take video in here? Very good. And please, by the way, we have very professional cameras right back behind you, so you're going to get much better video out of that anyway. Uh, and we do have these, these very intimidating men who will be uh, watching over your shoulders and giving you creepy, stinky looks uh, if you don't. Uh, and, by, and there are, by the way, some seats if you want to creep in or whatever, uh, you know, feel free to do that. Um, is, am I forgetting anything? Is there anything else I should say? Oh, 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 hey, check this out. Check this cool thing out. So, so Last, in the last couple of years, if you guys have been here, we hand out mics. But I was like, you know, that slows everything down. I don't want to do that. So what we did is we planted microphones all over. Please, come in. Come in. Yes, you're the next nice contestants on the prizes, stupid <laughs> monkey. Uh, come on in. Wherever. Up here? You want to sit up here? I'm kidding. You can't do that. <laughs> um, so, we, anyway, so we planted microphones. So now... If you have a question, just raise your hand, and Seth et al. will say, yes, you, what is your question? And you can just stand up, and you can ask your question. You don't have to wait for a microphone. That being said, do still project a little bit so that your voice can be picked up on the microphone, and also so that your fellow nerds can hear the question. Okay, sound good? Yeah. All right, without further ado, please welcome to the stage. John Harvatine the Fourth, Matt Seinrich, Eric Towner, and Seth Green. Thank you, sir. Matt, Matt. Right we'll we'll wait, start Zach, the bidding at hundred dollars. hundred dollars. Oh no! Wait, Zach, are you gonna sit over there? Like, I, I just, just in case. Like, I, th I feel like you should pull up right next to us, right? I, no, no, no. I like, I like lurking in the back. <laughs> like weirdly behind, and I like these deep seats. I know. Too. I'm going What's up, guys? Like this. There we go. Just gonna watch some TV. <laughs> Settle in. Give you all a nice view of our crotches for a while. <laughs> Maybe, so Maybe not. <laughs> Why well, we filled this room, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so look at that view, isn't that amazing? What talk so about we just that open is the question. Look at yeah. that. Angels in the outfit. You guys want to storm the field? Yeah, with angels. Me? Like I don't want to scare security, but I know for a fact that that door goes to the field. <laughs> Doesn't seem to be any restraints in the seats. <laughs> I don't know, guys. We could all get arrested really quick today. <laughs> hey, oh, hey. Oh, yeah, you guys came to tour the studio. Yes, of course. Nice <laughs> to see you again. That happens. <laughs> so is there a format? Should we adhere to any no, of oh, hi. You we, know the format. You've been here a couple years. By the way, let's, we let's welcome the them format? back, because they keep giving us so much love. <laughs> I mean it. Let's. If I, you know, if I, could, if I could just take a few minutes of your panel, because it's theirs. Uh, <laughs> no, genuinely, like the first year I did Nerd HQ, 
I, nobody, I didn't even know what the hell I was doing. And I was literally calling my friends like you saying, so I'm doing this thing and I can't really explain it, but will you just believe me? That's how we made robot chicken. <laughs> <laughs> So you know, so yeah. you know, like yes. you well, get a vision, and then you just need your friends to. I believe don't. In you. I don't respond to every creepy solicitation call that I get, <laughs> but I know for a fact that you back up your ideas with action. You're, you know, you guys know Zach Levi. He actually makes things happen. So well, I'll follow you, dude. I love you. Thank you. I love so you. Well. Oh, that's so nice. <laughs> Isn't that cute? There's a make out <laughs> session later. But anyway, so you but you know the format. Guys, this is yeah, this is your time. Is. I wanted to make Nerd HQ so you guys get an hour to ask whatever you want. There's no moderator. Yeah, I will say moderator. this, we have some stuff to show you, but it's you know, that that's yeah, not as we'll, we'll, you can we'll, see that. But we really want to talk to you guys. So it, it's one of those things where we don't ever know what we're doing. So we kind of just open it up to the audience <laughs> and say, ask us questions, whatever you want. This is that just, moment where yeah. you're like, oh, if I could have lunch or if I could hang out in a room of several people <laughs> at a baseball stadium with it's just people that make these we cartoons. Have microphones. Yeah, just whatever you guys want. It's we'll an start. intimate conversation, guys. <laughs> so, 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 so Matt, with? let's talk about your first time. Yeah, Matt. I, I, I Were you scared? It. Did you bleed? <laughs> when, when you first came to Comic-Con, what was it like? Because <laughs> I bled, I remember. <laughs> I'm uncomfortable right now. That's how an intimate conversation feels. <laughs> A little uncomfortable. Excellent. Well, let's, let's turn, turn it over. Let's turn right, it over. First question. Anybody who wants to go, hand. raise your hand. Hands, we'll hands. Point out. If you have something, if you have digested the heat of this environment <laughs> and the overwhelming nature of Comic Con in general, and yes. can think clearly enough to ask a question, yes. Oh my gosh, there's so much. There's what can we talk about? I mean, that's the scary. We're thing. we're we're right we're right at the start of the second RCDC, uh, and I'm really excited about that. Yeah, and um, we're actually, we'll tease this, we're working on a new show, we have the creators in the audience, uh, called Friendship All-Stars of Friendship. It got announced a couple weeks ago with uh, L Studios. It's very hard to explain, but one of the, f it's really, really funny. I don't know how else to explain it, but it's really funny. It's Those guys right there, they make it. They're planted Harry, in the audience. Dan, 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 Harry, and Justin, yeah. raise your hands. Yeah. So, so the, the excitement of this show is Harry has animated with us for many seasons and he had a crazy idea and we were like, this is crazy, I don't know what it's gonna be, but why don't And to be fair, I think you and Seth hated it at first. I will be, I'll be well, honest hated. with you, I, I saw the animatic for this and didn't understand what it was going to be. I thought the animatic was funny when it was described to me, I was like, I don't know what that is. That's what I guess. They're like, it is Ron Perlman and Guillermo del Toro, and they live together, and, and they're, they're, best they're, friends. they're the bestest best friends, and in this uh, piece, they fight over who is a better best friend. We're gonna show it. So can we, can we, we show, show the first look? episode? Do you guys wanna see this? Yeah. Brace yourself. Did, did we work out the tech? We have not worked oh, out the technical not difficulties. Out the tech yet. What so we're going to act it out. Belay, belay that enthusiasm. You can gather around my iPhone. That's probably the thing we're most excited about right now. <laughs> Everybody yeah, wants to gather together on Harv's phone? You didn't even bring an iPad. It's just a straight-up phone this time. <laughs> we but, could uh, get Dan, Harry, and Justin to just act out the episode. I mean, it's not like you haven't done it before. <laughs> P.S. I gave Dan that haircut. If you go on lstudio.com, you can watch him give the bowl cut to him. It's literally a bowl cut. Cutting bowls with Seth G. <laughs> it's, my, it's my web series that I do in my downtime. Franco teaches classes in NYU. I cut bowl cuts. Did, did anybody bleed? What? That I, cut, that, I cut, that I cut Dan's hair? Did you cut anything else, like his ear or anything? Oh, no, we did all right. That was a clean cut. And I got straight lines and everything. I was really proud of it. <laughs> uh, this until, is all true. <laughs> until, <laughs> until we get the tech worked fiction. out. Are there other questions that we'll do right here? Uh, as far as uh, robot chicken goes, was there anything that was really interesting or a crazy idea that you had that did really far you from um, you know, incorporating into the show or airing? The, are you, that they or that we? <laughs> Who, who's they? <laughs> You know, the, the they and the they, oh, that's what they, they say. Or, or, you know, they're making that. Or, you know, they started doing
doing that. That's the thing. That's the thing. Uh, we there, there was one, but I think we ended up putting it on the DVD. It was like a postpartum uh, stress disorder situation where uh, no, 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 not the postpartum. It's it's PTSD. We had a we made a joke. <laughs> All right. Those are two I'm very, very different very things. Hungover this it's completely <laughs> different conditions. We made I'm a, just gonna shut up now. We made a joke about a guy who was, you know, dealing with some trauma, and he's at the doctor's office. The doctor's like, "Hey, man, you're not gonna hear those voices in your head anymore." He's like, "The voices? They've been calling me, and they're like, you're ready to go home." He goes home. His family's so happy to see him. He's like, "Oh, my family! I'm, I missed you so much." And then he hears the voice in his head, "Finish her!" And he's like, <laughs> the, the, you know. The kid comes. The kid, the room. daddy, daddy, finish him! Oh! And there's like a pizza on the side table. It's like, finish it. He's like, ah. <laughs> he looks around and he's like, ah. We were like, this is brilliant commentary on and Mortal Kombat. Until the network ends up seeing it and goes, you realize hey, you have a father coming home and killing his entire family. So this, this traumatized soldier comes to his house and then murders his family because of the voices in his head. We were like, well, when you say it like that. <laughs> It's a, lot, it's a lot less funny, but when you say, oh, the guy from Mortal Kombat, like, what's it like when he comes back from that competition, right? That's gotta be hard. And they were like, yeah. Yes, it's very hard when soldiers come home from combat. We're like, w w w it's not, it's like fantasy combat. <laughs> He's like, get over here. It's, I don't know any. Body that has oh. the stretchy arms like Dal Sim. Nobody's gonna go. <laughs> so, uh, did you guys plan on incorporating anything from like dads or Frank, Franklin and Bash on uh, Robot Chicken to make fun of you guys? Or, uh... Are we gonna make fun of Franklin and Bash on Robot Chicken? Yeah. Or, or, da or uh, upcoming show Dads? Well, let's get Dads successful. Let's get Dads on the air. <laughs> <laughs> let's get people to watch that show. And then we'll be able to make parody about it, I guess. <laughs> but, but which Franklin comes first? Bash. Franklin and Bash, I would, anytime I get to make fun of Brecken is a welcome opportunity. So um, I hope so. Um, but we haven't yet. We haven't. There's something, there's something about Mark Paul and how often his butt's on that show, though. <laughs> Mark, you, you know Mark Paul's butt is on Franklin and Bash like every week. No. I think it's in there. I, I think don't it's think in You guys know there's a program called Franklin and Bash on <laughs> TNT? So there's Brecken Meyer and Mark Paul Gosler. <laughs> a good promotion. I mean, it's in their third season. I guess they're doing well. <laughs> All right, next one. Another question. <laughs> right here. How do you guys feel about Disney taking over Star Wars? Um, about Disney taking over Star Wars? Yeah. Pixar and Marvel have continued to make awesome movies since their mergers, so I guess I'll wait and see. So far, so good. I mean, what it really means is a wider a distribution opportunity for any of their content, uh, and probably a Star Wars theme park, so. Uh, and, I went to Harry Potter World at Universal. We drank that butter beer and had a wand fight, you know. <laughs> I look forward to the day that I can go to the cantina and shoot Greedo. <laughs> I know everybody's, everybody gets scared when things change, but you know, Comic-Con over the last several years that it's become so huge and there's been all this Hollywood infusion. It's just made the quality of the products better. Oh. The lines are longer, it's a little bit harder, but oh my gosh, did you see that Joe Transformers set? <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> who's got it? Who's already got it? Who in, the, who in the room's already got it? Just me. <laughs> you are king. <laughs> anybody here like G.I. Joe, the guy in the G.I. Joe shirt maybe? Yeah. <laughs> You know, there's oh, a G.I. Joe Transformers crossover set at Hasbro that has, like, I'm what's that? The girl with the G.I. Joe. Oh, the girl she's with the G.I. Joe. She's a lady. Oh, she is out Joeing all of you. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen that set? Yes. It's awesome. It is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Oh, P.S. Can I answer that question? P.S. More Star Wars movies. No set. Yeah, there's going to be, like, 15 Star Wars movies over the next 16 years. I'm <laughs> I'm not, this is like our time, man. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. Right up there. Yeah, hi. Um, have you ever thought of doing an international flavor robot chicken, like going to uh, specific countries and their typical toys for that country? Like, 
going like, uh, like Australia? <laughs> we are going to Sydney in October. Um, but, we're, doing, um, we're doing something at the Opera House. I've assured the international security that I won't try and climb the building this time. <laughs> Yeah, buddy. I'll set you up like Friar Tuck. <laughs> Look how stylish that man is. I think of the customer. Yeah. Right on. Um, as, far as, as far as specialized toys for different regions, I mean, we write what we know. Um, we, we hope for a lot of, uh, you know, exchange as far as the kind of things that were popular in the States, the things that we grew up with. But we also, we recruit new writers every year for Robot, and we try and find people to bring their own voice and their own sensibility to it. And then as far as the haircut goes, uh, my con schedule is crazy this year, but uh, we'll try and hook it up. I had a Floby that still works, but it's only got one setting, so. I do one be. over here. You, sir, in the, is that a Tesla hat? And a stupid monkey shirt. Wow. You are crushing this. Did you dress him? I'm, 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 <laughs> does he got Voltron sneakers on? Uh, no, just in like. Then sorry. I didn't dress him. Sorry. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> My question was actually Tesla related. Where are you charging yours? All the blink stations, like they're, the Petco Park, they're all blocked off. So. Um, I charge my Tesla at home. I haven't yet charged it, uh, checked any of the superchargers yet, but I got the location list on the update. Yeah, I mean, we're, I'm from the Bay Area. We drove it down. Uh, so we Would you drive an S down? Yeah, yeah. Gosh, I love that car, man. We are so far in the future. Like, people don't realize, they're like, oh, where's my flying car, my jetpack? And you're like, give it a year. Give it like five years. We're, we're right on the edge. My, my biggest difficulty has been in this area because they don't have the supercharger here, so you gotta do yeah. the trickle charges and stuff. But I was just wondering you need, if you brought it and knew where you were charging. You need to set up the, the, the high, high output charger at your house on like a 220. Yeah, I've got it at 220, but. Yeah, it, that charges me in like four, six hours. I realize everybody else. Nobody knows what we're talking about. Like, we both bought an electric car. Right so while everyone is suffering through this insane gas crisis, which is putting gas prices at five to five dollars a gallon or more, both of us are just like, oh, I gotta charge my car tonight. It was free to drive from San Jose here because we just hit the supercharger. The supercharger. Yeah. We're in the future, guys. Well, my, my problem's just while I'm in the area. Cause my, my charger's at home, so I was wondering if you would grab somebody's, like, dryer outlet. Yeah. <laughs> Plug your car in. You guys mind if I charge the car for a couple hours? <laughs> it won't be long. It's like the, it's like the, the Wi-Fi, sta the uh, charging stations at the airport. Yeah. won't be long until we're all plugging our cars into something. Right over here. What's going on with Star Wars Detours? Star Wars Detours, you guys probably know that because uh, when George created that show, there were no plans to make new Star Wars movies. And so the thought behind television, George has always said that television is where the format goes. That's where entertainment, that's where media goes. Um, and uh, the thought was to make something that was for the family, that was like The Simpsons, that was smart enough for adults to enjoy. He kept referencing SpongeBob, he loved. The Simpsons was really the model. So we wrote a ton of it. We've probably got 60 scripts, is that right? What were the finishes? Well, like 60 yeah. plus scripts. We have uh, 39 episodes. completed episodes. Finished, mixed, yeah. color time, there, and it's good. I actually really love the show. But, but, but it, was a, it was an internal decision, and it was a Lucasfilm decision, not a Disney decision, which is the wide misunderstanding. Disney would have loved to have had detours for the next three years in advance of there being your Star Wars media, but you get into that conversation of how do you introduce a generation to these characters? And the choice was really simple. They wanted the focus to be on the films. And it's not that the show will never come out, it's just that it will be when it's timed right. And I still suspect that media will change fundamentally before they even put it out. I suspect that there will be more of the subscription-based programming channels, the, the a la carte download stuff, your, your blocks of Arrested Development, your blocks of Orange is the New Black or House of Cards. You'll, you'll buy things as a season and our hope is that something, whenever Disney and Lucasfilm pioneer their downloadable content thing, I expect that something like Detours would be at the head of it. Yeah, but it'll be a little bit. But we got a lot of it. <laughs> and it's, it's not like it's gonna go out of style, so. People will still like Star Wars in four years, right? We're guessing, <laughs> speculating. And it's good. <laughs> yeah, well that is the thing. We're all really proud of the show. We love it and wish we could talk more about it. But, <laughs> but, but sniper rifles are probably aimed at our heads, so. You know. It's probably better not to. They're working on episode seven, and it better be awesome. <laughs> right, guys? Yeah. Yeah.
Yeah, I know. But, but think about when we can go to the cantina at Disneyland. Let's do this. <laughs> Get the X-Wing experience. It'd be awesome. All right. What do you think about J.J. Abrams directing the new Star Wars film? I'm excited. Yeah, I like J.J. Yeah. J.J. makes good movies. His Mission Impossible is my favorite Mission Impossible. Yeah, no, I mean, he's great. I mean, until we see it, it's like... <laughs> right? Fine. I think we're all in the same boat. The, the chemical mixture sounds like it could yield an excellent result. So, I want to see it. <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel about J.J.? You big Felicity fan? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's an underrated show, guys. Carrie Russell's a star for a reason. <laughs> uh, a gentleman, uh, Micro Mayhem is ready to play if oh, you sweet. would like oh, to play okay. it. Oh, Micro Mayhem. Right, so wait, you guys you want to intro that real quick? You guys should yeah. intro that. How do we tee this up? I guess Micro... So this is a short uh, that we created at the studio, and this is just something that we do in our spare time. Micro Mayhem. <laughs> Yeah. Do you want to add anything to that, that art? I think that's it. I think we should see it, and then we can talk about it, because it's well, kind of weird. I think it might I be will. playing over there. Is it already playing? We're like, hey, we love those little toys. And we you guys, make do you guys remember really micro cool. machines? <laughs> we just had a lot of them, and we needed to do something with them. <laughs> but they, they built, constructed, like reverse engineered a bunch of super tiny cameras that could accomplish cinematic angles and scenes with tiny, tiny things. So the whole set for that entire thing was about Four by six, right? Like, like four here, foot by six here, foot? Here to here. To here. Bit of beer. Yeah. We'll oh, set. here. <laughs> about, here. About this big to the stage. There was one animator just hanging out on that. And that was one of those things where they just said, hey, let's make this. No one's going to pay for this. <laughs> We're not going to be like, hey, we want to shoot a bunch of tiny little cars, make them look awesome, give us some money. They won't do that. <laughs> so then we make it, and then we go, this is what it looks like. And then you can take that kind of thing and show it to people and say, we want to make more of this. We want to make this like this. Yeah, that's, that's, is that something you, you guys shows? would like to see more of? Like, yeah. I, <laughs> well, I guess we should make more then. Matt, Matt, you got to make it happen. All right, done. Cool. OK. <laughs> um, Any questions? Do we, do we have the? Wait. The Wait. French of All Stars. Wait. That that will almost be up. Uh, okay. like, uh, it's cooking for four more minutes. In between. Perfect. Perfect. In between. <laughs> yes. Go. Gears of War. Yes. Do you plan on crowdsourcing any future projects? You know, crowdsourcing is a really funny thing. I love the power of the crowd. We all agree the crowd is amazing. And when you want to get a crowd behind you, everybody shares that incredible experience. And so, we don't want to take that lightly. We don't want to just kickstart something small. We want to do something that will all benefit from sharing that experience. There's a lot of content 
We just want to make it, show it to people. It's a lot of stuff that you guys demand. We want to make that on your behalf. And then there's the stuff that we will make together. And we'll find those projects, and they'll be special. And then you'll, believe me, you'll hear about it. Uh, in Something. the back there. <laughs> right there. Right? Oh. Yet you. Hi. Hi. Uh, the choppers are question. circling. <laughs> uh, I, mean, I love the show. I've been watching since I was nine, so that gives you... You have bad parents. Is that, yeah, is that bad parenting? <laughs> <laughs> Raised by wolves in the wild, I see. <laughs> no, i just addicted to Cartoon Network and Adult Swim, so I just like, literally when they go to sleep, I just like, creep in and just turn it on. Yes. So you guys... It's only live streaming. Nobody's watching. Don't worry. <laughs> Second, uh, when you were talking about Kickstarter, would you ever do like a full-length movie? That would be really cool. Like, yes. I mean, 15 minutes. I'm like. Oh, you mean, for, you mean oh, robot for robot chicken? Yeah, robot chicken. Mm. May maybe. I mean, we look at all the, the shows that have expanded into movies, whether it's South Park or The Simpsons or like even SpongeBob. When you when you take something that's a show and make it into a movie, you really need something important it's gotta it can't just be a, an, an hour-long episode although we've done we've done hour-long episodes For with star, star wars, wars and May, maybe but what's tricky about it is our, the whole concept of robot chicken is add television so to take add and make it into 90, 90 minutes, minutes. <laughs> kind of defeats the purpose like even if it was way. 80 minutes it's still you gotta we'd have to have a story and then we just i don't know we just haven't we really haven't put We're a lot of effort it, yeah, towards yeah. it. I apologize. We're, that's the truth. Yeah. That's the truth is that year after year, everyone says, oh, Robot Chicken Movie. And we're like, oh, that'd be cool. And then we just get buried 11 months out of the year making the show. And then we're like, oh, we forgot to even Make think that about movie. that movie. Yeah. That's the truth. We totally, we've been slacking, <laughs> hustling, trying to build this studio. <laughs> but we will. We will. Maybe someday. Do you have any plot, plot ideas? <laughs> There's a movie. There's a movie called Amazon Women on the Moon, which is. Oh, I forgot I was at Comic Con. Thank you guys. <laughs> Appreciate that. Appreciate that. Um, and it's that kind of thing where it's got some storylines going through it, and it bounces around into different worlds. And then what was that? That one. I swear it was like John Ritter and Terry Gar. Mom and Dad save the world, maybe. Yeah. But they bounce around everywhere, right? Oh, it's so good to be amongst friends, guys. <laughs> You don't even know. <laughs> he showed uh, up on the Three's Company set now. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. It's go good damn times. All right, who's got it? Who's got it? Right yes. there. Um, I was wondering if you guys have ever done a photo shoot of just all of your toys at once? Was like it? One, like one big picture of all nothing. the toys that we have? That's called our storage unit. Um, <laughs> yeah, we should go take our pictures of our storage. Yeah. We should probably do that. Um, do you mean personally or like robot? I mean like Robot. Yeah. Robot, we... And personally, if you, you want. You, I mean, y'all see my personal pics every Comic-Con. I just Instagram the hell out of my toy collection. <laughs> um, we've never done that. We're probably not organized enough to do that. <laughs> it's a really cool idea. It would probably make for a great... Like, it's all coming out, guys. Magazine. We're woefully unorganized, all right? Uh, <laughs> we haven't put time towards the movie, and we don't know how to store yeah, things. What do we do? <laughs> Does anyone have a camera? <laughs> But they're in a lot of great organized boxes. Yeah. Yes. It's all in boxes. There was uh, that magazine Juxtapose did a feature on us, and they had a bunch of good pictures of a lot of the different places where we work. Yeah. That's the closest. That's the closest. Yeah. <laughs> Eric Blackman. Why don't you guys post more behind the scenes photos on your Instagram? Because <laughs> we don't have a coordinated behind the scenes photographer. <laughs> Professional photographer, Eric Blackman. <laughs> do you want to come do some free work for us? <laughs> you, can uh, you can intern. I've just, I've just been given the high sign that your audio, other video is ready to play. Yes, yeah, this is exciting. Yes. This is great. So now, without Harry, any further introduction. This is Harry, Dan, and Justin's brilliance. This is Friendship All-Stars of Friendship. And the clip. <laughs> it's oh, so near. Oh, Matt, you gotta go like that to make it happen. And oh, here, here it comes. Here it comes. Here we go. Man, I, 
It's pretty bright in here, do you think? Uh, no, it is good reading level, Ron. Pretty, pretty cool that the sun's so bright, but you know what? I, I'm not worried about my pupils over-dilating. A little silencio, por favor. I have to read the Necronomicon in time for Comic-Con. I think I've got something maybe a little bit cooler than a Necronomicon. I would be hard-pressed to find out what is f***ing cooler than a book with souls in it. For example, check out this thing about the planet Zornok, the place in which hell is in space. Zornok? Who's there? My new sunglasses. Your new sunglasses who? My new sunglasses are on my face and are super cool. I would not disagree with that, my f***ing friend. <laughs> they're cool, they're cool, they're cool. Ron and Guillermo. Uh, uh. Pretty cool, huh, see? Huh? Uh. Huh? Are they broken? Uh-uh. Huh? They look broke. Oh, they're back together. Huh? They are broken. No, they're supposed to do that. What? Why would anybody want them to f***ing do that? They're flip-up sunglasses, man. Oh, ho, ho, ho. they flip up. That's right. I got them at the Camarillo Outlets. Camarillo Outlets. I've never been there. I think there's a Camarillo Outlets. That's where I was. No, I know where you are talking about. It is that you are pronouncing it wrong. Camarillo. Camarillo. No, Camarillo. That was very, very close, though, my friend. But it's just C... It's L's in there, right? Imagine that the two L's are not there like they cancel each other out. Camaro. <sighs> I am going to call this one a wash. Not so fast. Check it out. For me? For you. For me? For you. You are the f***ing best. No, you are the f***ing best. You are the Best. You are the f***ing best. Hey, this is me looking at you, sir, and you are the f***ing best. No, this is me, Ron Perlman, looking at his best friend, Guillermo del Toro, and saying you are the f***ing best. This is me, Guillermo del Toro, and I am looking at you. Slide it over here, baby. <laughs> All right, and a one, two, three, cannot wait to see. <laughs> uh, the excitement is murdering me. Oh. Do you like it? I don't like it. I love it! You mean that? Guillermo del Toro is no liar. I love this more than my family and my wife. Get over here, you big hairy man that I live with. Okay. Bear hug! <laughs> oh, I can't breathe good. Yeah. Uh, Ron? Are you alive? Next time on Friendship All-Stars of Friendship. Rod, what are you doing in full Hellboy makeup? I am having dinner with Alfonso Cuaron and Inuratu tonight. Oh, sh <laughs> Right? So we're making that. <laughs> <laughs> but how do you... Like, how do you even pitch that to somebody? That's the, that's the hardest part. We've been talking about this for months now, and I don't know how to explain it to anyone. I just gotta just watch it. It's really funny. Right, guys? Yes. L Studio. So when, so when and where? Uh, L Studio. L Studio. Com. Com. If, you, if you go now, I think the first episode debuts uh, next week. And then, um, yeah. Is that true, Dan? Next week? Yeah, July 24th. July 24th. LStudio.com. Cool. Any questions about that or other stuff? Oops. Yes. Hi. Hi. Um, on Robot Chicken, what has been your favorite segment to work on or your Ooh. favorite voice actor to work with? Ooh. So, Let's do this. every day is a little different because it's always, it's always pretty amazing. Yeah, but I will say that we got to bring in Sam Elliott and he was this morning nominated for an Emmy for his performance on our show. I, I, thanks. As, as was our very own Seth Green. That's not important. Thank you. Boy. So, thanks. So, two really cool things happened at that Sam Elliott thing. Uh, first of all, he, he told me to give him a minute, which was really funny. I, I started explaining to him, like, I'm, he walked right in the door, I'm telling him all about it, so this character, and he goes, let's just take a second. So what kind of show was this? <laughs> that was exciting. And then he, he said that working on our show was similar to working on a Coen Brothers movie, which I thought was the greatest compliment ever. 
And then we got him to say uh, this line several times. White wine, fuck yeah. <laughs> And apparently that's how the Emmys work. <laughs> Gosh, it's like choosing what you're, like your babies as far as like your favorite sketch. Every day it kind of is different. I, I have to say the white wine sketch is like popped to the top now. White wine, uh, fuck yeah. Just because of the, the announcement this morning. Um, uh, yeah, it's, it's tough, you know, like, you know, I came back to that Starbucks sketch we did where it's like the origin of Starbucks logo. Um, <laughs> has ruined Starbucks for me forever. Um, I, I went this morning by the Hilton Bayfront and I was like, I'm that gonna get Starbucks. That slut that adorns your coffee. That's all I see. It's terrible. So probably that one. And as far as like an actor goes, um, I always get more excited about Say like, who you're excited about. Who's coming in that you are so excited about? We still haven't gotten him, he's on his way. You made it happen. I did? Yes. Oh, now I'm curious, who is it? Oh, yeah, I forgot about that one. Uh, so, yeah, I will, this is, I am very excited about this, and probably no one's gonna care. Um, he hasn't come in yet, that's why I, hasn't ex I've been, I haven't experienced it yet. Uh, I saw Fast and the Furious. Uh, I was blown away by the connection of Fast and the Furious 6 to Tokyo Drift. Right. And I had he to He doesn't want Paul, he doesn't want Vinny, he doesn't even want Jordana. I had to get Han, because... <laughs> I flipped out, and how it tied into Tokyo Drift, I was like, this is all my words, worlds are all colliding. So, so he's gonna be coming in. But and I'm, he's I'm, underplaying, yeah. I got the late night phone call. Like, Hello, hey, it's Matt. Hey, Matt, we gotta get fucking Han in from <laughs> Fast and Furious. What are, you, I mean, what's, what are you talking about? What is it, what do we have to do? Han, from Fast and Furious, we gotta get him our robot. <laughs> okay, call, call Linda, get her, call, call, just get him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, what about you I, I have never seen anyone do the microphone phone. <laughs> that was amazing. It was the greatest. I've been I'm pioneering new improv. It is the greatest. Oh, that's a phone. I get it now. <laughs> I could have done I could have done this. But the first thing they teach you in mime class is that no but this is not real. This isn't a phone. So you have to do this. <laughs> and then you've got like that 1970s suitcase phone. <laughs> Hello? I'm talking to you from the car. <laughs> I'm gonna point out also that Harv's favorite was Dave Couillet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but Dave, Dave came in pre, pre you running the show. Yeah, and actually, you know, I was looking in the writer's room the other day and I did see, I don't know if I can say, but you wrote Full House. On the oh. board, does that mean anything? No, we're not it doing a sketch. We were. Oh. <laughs> you crushed this little boy's what? dreams. Well, Sorry, we yes, we are doing a we are doing a sketch. Oh. Yeah. There you I go. I don't think we've. Ever, I don't think there's been a full house. Did we do something? Was it in bloopers? Was there a full house thing in bloopers? I don't think so. I don't think there was. Yeah, I don't think so. Sorry. <laughs> we we got to get Dave. I know. We bring um, Dave in. Dave is so talented. We bring him in. Do you guys know Dave Coulier is an incredibly accomplished oh, yeah. voiceover actor, kick-ass comedian, and all-around awesome guy. It's always, it's always surreal getting these people. It, it's like, like we just had Paul Rubens come in and it's like, you sit there and all you want to do is all, hear all of his Pee Wee stories and then you look at the clock and you're like, oh my God, I've been talking to you for two hours and we've done no work. And, and it's, Paul, I would love to hear what Tim Burton was like in 85, but we've got to get you in the booth, okay? <laughs> it's awful. Look, I appreciate your work in Batman Returns, but uh, we've got to get you in the booth. <laughs> That's not true, we just let him talk. <laughs> Oh, oh, uh, hey, wait, I, I gotta wait. I gotta get somebody else. Somebody else. Uh, that guy. That guy. Seth was giving out bull haircuts. <laughs> you missed the early you, conversation. You, did you show up? Man, I could buzz cut you, but I you don't have enough for a bowl there, buddy. <laughs> the you need a hard shag over the back of your ears friend. for me to line up those. You grow it if you're willing to come over. <laughs> so let me get this straight. You want me to come over for the months that it will take you to grow your hair? <laughs> And then wait, wait until we both agree that the length is sufficient enough for me to cut you. I've got an Xbox. <laughs> <laughs> Tempting. <laughs> All right, can I get a ride? <laughs> <laughs> Who else? Who else? Oh yeah, we can take that guy's Tesla. <laughs> you, you sir, in the nerd shirt. Uh, how are you gonna manage the already really busy schedule with adding dads on here? 
Yeah. I mean, yeah actually, got, how are you going to do that? You know what? I've got an incredibly yeah, patient Seth, wife. Do that? And, uh, and an husband. incredibly patient television wife. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but, but, we, but it's, we've it's, done it before. The truth, um, the truth is, it's a team. You have a big team. Our, we have a we have a big I, team for all the things that we well, make. I'm, I'm and you need everybody out. to be awesome. But, and everybody has been awesome. But the thing I always point out, Seth's an actor, and he goes and acts for long periods of a time while we're doing it. And it's this is this is actually easier than him going to do a movie. Yeah. Like the, me being in, in town Angeles, working on a show, oh especially a multi-camera show where I've got split days. I'll actually be able to put in half days at the studio. And we've got. It's, it's all about delegating. I got really good at delegating responsibility in our fifth season. <laughs> <laughs> Prior to that, I had a couple of physical and mental yeah. breakdowns. <laughs> but it's much easier. I appreciate you yeah. considering my health, though. Thank you. <laughs> Was there one over here? You, you, you and then you. Yes, you. Hello. Hello. I'm a big fan. I like your hair. Thank you. I think I've had similar shade. Not yeah. quite that. Not a lot of color. Not quite that. Yeah. Yes. So... Silly question, but when you impersonate yourself on Robot Chicken, do you just use your Scott Evil doll, or did you actually have a custom one? We did, so that evolved actually from the very first time when Matt and I, when we were doing the the webisodes, we had our first customs made. We still use that same company, those same series of sculptors. Um, yeah, that's where they all came from. They were all custom up. Oh. Yeah. Do you think my Scott Evil doll is worth money now? I've had you know, I might be the worth eight dollars. Would you know what the shirt is? Do you know which shirt it is? The is it cl the the T-shirt? Is it like a really blurry thing, or is it kind of yeah, visible? There were sure. three. This is how nerdy I am. There were three different versions of okay. the T-shirt, <laughs> <laughs> and one that didn't have the gun. One that just had handcuffs as the necklace, not I the gun and the really handcuffs. Really early one. It's probably worth like seven or eight dollars. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen I've seen that Scott Evil as like a hard peg warmer in some of the dustiest of toy stores. <laughs> I never take that personally though. I try not to. I thought you bought them all. <laughs> I buy them all. I got a I got a bunch of those Buffy ones. The, that was a great sculpt. Woo! Yeah. Right? The more action. They made an awesome toy. Yeah. Not that not that the McFarlane one wasn't awesome, but. People just didn't seem to care about <laughs> having Scott Evil on their desk. It talks, <laughs> yeah, it talks. I'm sure it's available anywhere you go. It's not like you're going to hunt for it. <laughs> and you, you, sir. Uh, you talked about uh, giving the audience what it wants, and, and uh, you went to an extreme with that with Control TV. Yep. So I'm just wondering what you and uh, everybody on the panel thinks is the future of media. I kind of mentioned that earlier. That's a big question. I mean, we... This is a Seth dissertation. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I mean, we, you, you can see sort of where it's heading. And now that there's more of a direct conduit between the creators and the audience, it, it confuses all of the, the machines that have been in place for as long as television's been around. So typically, the way the television was invented, it's an ad-sponsored model. So the advertisers pay for the production of the television. And every year, each of the networks solicit advance commitments from all of the advertisers, and that finances their entire slate throughout the year. So as private financing has become more available, as people have been making more money and just want to make their own thing, there's an even more direct relationship with the creators and the financiers. So it sort of removes the studios and networks from the equation. And now that there's online distribution, it, it eliminates the concept of needing to distribute something over any platform other than your own digital thing. So everybody can get their content right in their home or their hand or their pocket. That fundamentally changes the way this all works. And with crowdsourced financing, you see that we're really in control. If you guys want to make something, you link up with the people that have the ability to, and you guys get it done. But, but what I think is going to happen is as that evolves, you'll see more subscription-based content models. So you will subscribe for $5 a month or $20 a month or whatever the, the content is, and you'll have unlimited access to all that, the same way that Netflix is. Netflix has done so well with their subscription-based programming that, that's just like reruns of things that they're able to make their own content, like House of Cards or Arrested Development or Orange is the New Black. And those are high-quality programs, too, on, on level and competition with your HBOs or any of the other prestige subscription-based models. And if you look at the Emmys, it's speaking to it right now. I mean, the ne Emmys were announced today, and Netflix just destroyed. I mean, you know, you guys they're up there with HBO. made that happen. That's the yeah. that's the trick, dude. So it's it's a positive time as far as media. It's it's a little overwhelming because there's so much content and there's so many different channels. But you, as the consumer, are fundamentally in control of what happens, and that's an amazing time. Well said. Yeah. Yeah. Really well ah. said. I'm, I'm publishing Nothing the paper later <laughs> this year. <laughs> Again, his dissertation. <laughs> yeah. Right over here. Is that April O'Neil? Yes. 
<laughs> oh, he's so good to be at Comic Con. <laughs> um, so where did <laughs> what? <laughs> we had our thing. It's cool. Where did the idea for Robot Chicken come from? You know, it's an accident, and yes. it's it's kind of the best. It's the, it's, it's the best instruction to follow the things that you're actually personally passionate about. I like toys. Matt and I like comics and pop culture and toys and nerdy stuff. And we m set out to make a short. We were just going to yeah. make a short. Pre, I mean, the very, the very pre broad yeah, Pre-broadband internet. We were like, hey, let's make a short. Nowadays, you can just shoot it on your phone with your garage band. You can <laughs> score it and... You sound really you old. Render you all, all your like effects yeah. and stuff. I but know, I really do. But really, what it was is I was in New York working at Wizard Magazine. Seth and I were friends. He called me up one day. He's like, hey, I'm doing this thing. I, I want to make something for Conan O'Brien. Maybe my Two toy minutes. and Conan O'Brien's toy. Two minutes, stop adventure. motion. And Action we had figures. no idea how to do it. We searched out high and low to find it. We had no money to do it with. We, we solicited we all of the animation something. companies that were local, yeah. everybody from Ardman to Kyoto Brothers, and just were like, how do we make stop motion animation? Can we hire you, or what do we do here? And then uh, around that time, Sony had a plan to do, to make a destination site, like a YouTube, pre-YouTube. But and it was so, dial-up. Dial-up. So there's no broadband, and they paid us to make 45 minutes of content, essentially 12 four-minute shorts, and that 45 minutes became w uh, the pilot for Robot Chicken. And then Matt and I spent the next four years shopping that 45 minutes around everywhere while the, while the, um, the culture caught up, I guess. Because like, when, we, when we were talking about it, it was, it was fa Family Guy had had one season on the air. And they were the, it was the only other show that was doing a lot of pop culture. That's Seth MacFarlane was doing voices for our web show because he didn't have a job because he was canceled. Seth MacFarlane actually <laughs> called me when Mike Lazo agreed to buy the reruns of Family Guy for Adult Swim and said you should have a meeting at Adult Swim because now they're a network that's buying things. Yep. And so even though we'd already met with Cartoon and even though we'd gone to everybody with this weird idea that wasn't even as formed as it is now, um, yeah, MacFarlane told us to go meet with Mike Lazo. <laughs> and we did, and now we have a show. But totally by accident, we figured it out along the way. We had no idea how to produce stop motion we when we got the job to make 20 episodes. And, it was and they're like, here, make a season. And we were like, I, yeah. I, I guess we better figure out how to, <laughs> how to do that. And, and even better, we were like, we both have other jobs, so this is a second job to us. I was really like deep in that actor lifestyle, making two movies a year and just abandoned that. Just <laughs> <laughs> beach house. Thing, just now, nah, sell it all, sell it all. Let's let's make stop motion. Let's make an eleven-minute show for late at night. Let's spend fourteen months a year <laughs> making this show. Well, but I wouldn't trade it, honestly. Like I can't believe this is real. I can't believe this is real life. Here we are in our seventh season of the show. We've got a room full of people that watch it. That's insane. And people pay us to play with action figures. Well, and and more to the point, it's it's really our deepest loves. We've been coming to Comic Con since before Hollywood was coming to Comic-Con. <laughs> and it's amazing, it's amazing for it to feel like this now, for us all to get to share this experience together. That's sort of answer the question. <laughs> We're tangential, guys, I apologize. Well, thanks. You with the shiny earrings. I, like um, I hope so, because you raised your hand. <laughs> <laughs> Experience is debatable because it's always you get different experiences every time. I love acting. Like acting is really where I feel most comfortable. So when I'm doing that, I feel the most like myself. All of these other things that we've gotten to do are our deepest passion. So it's amazing to get to participate in the creation of something that you love so deeply. Yeah, but I, but I'll, I'll always go back to acting. That's why I'm doing this show. I'm gonna do this show and be on TV every week at the same time that we're making all of these shows. <laughs> He's a workaholic. Right over here. What do you guys watch? What do you look forward to seeing? What movies are you hot for? Like, you know? we're uh, I saw the shit out of Pacific Rim. <laughs> <laughs> you can probably go check it back in IMAX, too. Like, it yeah. looks like it could be an IMAX movie. Did it? Is it worth an IMAX? Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Breaking Bad's <sighs> coming back. Thanks. Oh yeah, Breaking Bad. You like? 
You know, it's it's again, we, we like we like the stuff that everybody I like likes. Dexter watching that. Yeah. Uh, Got that uh, AC tin toad from Entertainment Earth. Did you guys see that? Who here likes Dexter? So there is a lunchbox shaped like the air conditioner, and inside it there's a blood splattered Dexter with a slide box, and it comes with a bunch of slides. Oh. Right. You're welcome. <laughs> Entertainment Earth, they have two of the ponies too, if you're if you're a pony hunter. Oh. <laughs> All right. All right, that's <laughs> um, but shows watch Walking Dead. That's yeah. awesome. Everybody probably watches Game of Thrones in here. Oh, God, that's an amazing show. We we forgot because it's because it's off for the season. <laughs> so sad. I know. Lots of um, stuff. cartoon stuff. Watch uh, the old Adult Swim stuff. I still like Adventure like Brothers. Swims, uh, Simpsons. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, pretty much everything. Batman. Yeah. Oh, and then and then there's like the guilty players, like Big Brother. <laughs> tell them tell them what you really watch, Matt. Big Brother. No no no. Go deeper. Go deeper. Oh, MTV's the challenge. <laughs> Oh my god, I've seen every season. <laughs> <laughs> I get more starstruck meeting those people than like We went we went to something and he was like, oh shit, there's the Jersey Shore. <laughs> Guilty pleasure. You are you're part of the problem. I like to <laughs> if I can't watch it, I need to make fun of it. If you keep building it, they'll keep coming. <laughs> <laughs> These <laughs> These bad things, come on, we make fun of it, we get paid, life is good. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Um, in the Firefly shirt. And then the red, the red, and red shirt. And then the red shirt. Speaking of other things, on the online shows like YouTube, are there any particular people you follow on YouTube that you're a big fan of? Like, I like Pretty W. I like a lot of the stuff that he does on there. I, I there just, that, that Keenan Cahill kid is like such, a, yeah. such an inspiration. He's so fun and really has just made something out of what he has, which is admirable. Um, and then co content-wise, there's, there's so much content online right now. There's so much exclusive to web content. It's like the best time for us. I've been watching a lot of the Jash stuff. I don't know, they just launched. I like their stuff a lot. Sarah um, Silverman's thing? Yeah, like Tim and Eric I love. So um, yeah, it's all over the place, you know. You know, it's all the, it's all the same thing. Your TV is but a monitor where you play your media. So to say that your subscription to HBO is a, a more value subscription than your subscription to Netflix, it's just a misunderstanding of it, I think. Um, but I think it'll be, you know, Ernie Klein had a good hypothesis in Ready Player One where every single human being has their own channel and some channels are just more frequented because they have a higher marketing capability. Which is really where we are. Doesn't everybody have their own YouTube, their own Instagram, their own Twitter, their own Vine, their own what else? Yeah. How many are there, guys? How many? <laughs> how many different things do I have to check when we leave this panel? Yeah. <laughs> I know, right? I'm gonna go. And you in the red shirt. Uh, I love Peggy Maximum. Talk about how that came about. Yeah, I love, yeah, Peggy I love Maximum I love too, too, man. Um, Tame is one of those things where it was uh, we love it. Um, I think we got busy. And then because we got so busy for so long. It's never re officially been canceled. Yeah. It's not like it was canceled. It's just, it just hasn't been picked up to do I keep stuff saying, like. and I, I think if everybody wrote a letter, it might help my cause. <laughs> I keep saying that Adult Swim should do a movie special. Like we do a, an hour long or like a 90 minute Titan. We have it mapped out too. Cool yeah. It's just about time. Can, can about we give out Keith Crawford's phone number so they can text him and? <laughs> sure. It's yeah. uh, K E I. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't. I can't give out people's email on the panel. Sorry, guys. I hear yelling. Um, right back here. The zombie dinosaurs right out there. You mentioned the ponies before. Yes. Uh, I know there's a lot of people back home that would like to know: Are you a brony? I don't think I'm a brony by conventional brony definition, <laughs> but I am high brony sympathetic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think the conventional definition doesn't That's apply to me, but I know what's up with the ponies. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I don't know, kind of like an ambassador for different <laughs> organizations, like a translator, maybe. <laughs> are, you got, are you hard bronies guy, bronies? Uh huh. <laughs> Brony curious. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> All right, that's fair. <laughs> What's next? Who else? Who else? Wait, he, he just had you by a second, just a second. What's, what's some of the new stuff, like your uh, new writers are coming in that you guys are like, I have no clue what this is at all. And oh, it we, flies over your heads. Uh, we, we know it. It's just the stuff that we weren't as like well, hard into. One, uh, like one, our writer, Rachel Bloom, threw, got a cat dog sketch in. And she was so excited about cat dog. <laughs> Sang the song, the little cat dog dance. And, <laughs> and I was like, I appreciate your cat dog enthusiasm. I will never be at the same level. <laughs> Same thing with Alex Mack, she was like that too. So but I, like, but that, that Alex Mack sketch is really funny. It's great. I, I did not understand the background talent. It's, uh, it's, it's out online. of this world in the 90s. Oh, okay. Yeah. Do you remember the show Out of This World? Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, it's, uh, what's that other show that Allison was on? I don't know. It was like a witch, a witch, li oh, a witch lives in our house. It was like the, uh, the early 90s when that kind of thing was still really popular on TV and not in a Game of Thrones. Ah, oh, she's eating our baby. <laughs> not Sabrina, although Sabrina came after too. It was uh, Freedom, Freedom something. I can't, I'll, I'll ask her, I'll ask her. I'll post it, guys, I'll post it. He'll tweet it, he'll tweet it. <laughs> Did you have someone else? Was there, oh yes, you. What made you choose Donna over the other? It's the we hardest form We just wanted to commit ever. to the most <laughs> tedious, arduous art form, the most painstakingly time-consuming. <laughs> no, I, stop motion, you know, we wanted to make a, a thing about toys, and if you, when you draw something or paint something or build something in a computer, it has a fundamentally different presence than if you photograph it with lights and shadow, and it's there, you see it, your eye, your eye can just tell the difference. And so stop motion gives you that access into your audience. It just connects with their brain. And then if you've got a really skilled animator, they bring something inanimate to life. But it looks real, because everything feels to your eye like it's a fact. And it is. We're not, we're not cheating in it, so it's, it is. It's a real thing. Um, that's why it just, we never thought when we were setting out to make that two minute me and Conan go to Comic-Con <laughs> that it was going to turn into 14 months out of the year every day making this thing. No complaints, but it is so much bigger than we ever would have considered. And it, and, and, but it, that question always implies like that we thought, hey, let's make a show about this, and how would we do it? It was more like all of a sudden we were there, and they were like, you're making 20 of these, and we were like, yeah, all right. <laughs> st st stop motion, I guess, we're committed to that. <laughs> right back up here. Hi, you mentioned art and animation earlier. With Hardman? Hardman, yeah. I mean, I have, we've had the privilege of getting to meet and shake hands with some of those people at some of the award ceremonies that we've been to. I'm hugely impressed by it. And I love, I mean, that's... What was the Gromit, right? Those yeah, guys. yeah. Well, I was those into Creature Comforts, Creature Comforts yeah. was my big thing. Yeah. And I love Wallace and Gromit, but it was the, uh, uh, and then the movies, like Chicken Run and all that. Yeah. It's just, it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. Um, and it feels like a fantasy. That everything that Ardman makes feels like that. I just love Stop it. Stop Motion is very much a small community, and you know everybody within it. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. They're just running drills. Just <laughs> maneuvers, guys. Just your ride is here. Uh, thanks. That the the year that I show up at Comic Con, in a helicopter, <laughs> like Wilder Valderrama, Wilder Val Wilmer Valderrama, Jesus. <laughs> Like Wilmer Valderrama stepping off a helicopter. What's up, kids? <laughs> that will be the year that I need a cape. <laughs> <laughs> that will be next year. Yeah. We, we got time for one more question. One more question. It better be so good. Uh, really? It, wait, I know for a fact that you didn't answer a question. Uh, didn't ask a question. Did you already ask one? No, I didn't. Okay, so we got it. All right. No pressure. Um, no pressure. I got to do a guest spot on How I Met Your Mother, uh, and Allison Hanning and I got to be on camera again, which I love. We always love working together. She's, she's, I've known her. We met on My Stepmother's an Alien 20 plus years ago. She's uh, such a talented actor and um, really just the sweetest person. So anytime I get to play with her is, is a great time. Um, and I love Siegel. I've known him forever, too. So I got to do a scene with both of them. Oh, and then Neil. I got to do a scene with Neil, too. I've known Neil since Doogie Howser, so it's like <laughs> just old home week. Um, what's the funniest story I can tell you? Uh, Jason said 
Because in the scene, he ha he's eating a hot dog, and the scene is about him eating a hot dog. He was so excited in the morning. He was like, I'm going to eat like five of them, dude. I'm going to eat like five. And I go, no way you're going to actually eat five hot dogs. And so in the scene, I don't know which take they use, but you see him like trying to kill this hot dog in the take. And we did three takes, and by the third take, he was like, I'm not going to eat five. <laughs> And you know how he says it too. It's just like, <laughs> I'm not gonna, it's not gonna, I'm not gonna get it. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have reached our time. Please let's give it up for John, Matthew, Eric, and Seth. Thank you guys. Thank you guys. Thank you guys very much. Pleasure. Pleasure. You're so gracious. <laughs> You're so good looking. And if, yeah. you want them, and if you want them to come back next year, then make sure you... Yeah, yeah, take some pictures. Everybody, take some pictures. Take some pictures.